So this session is about uh, automated lab um, module, PowerShell module. If you are here by mistake or because there was no uh, notification on the screen, feel free to leave. Uh, and I'm Mikey Bronowski. You should see the, the last name in red. Uh, that's important because this is not working. What the heck? Automated lab in less than uh, 1,200 seconds, because th that's the shorter version of the talk I usually give with uh, extra demos and PowerShell. But this is a short one for uh, the SQL bits. And I'm Mikey Bronowski. White and red means the colors of, my, uh, of the flag of my country. I'm Polish. And uh, I'm here with my family. Uh, my wife is here in the first row, and my son, you might see a, a little human following me yesterday. That was my son. And this house, it's like painted house from uh, a village near Krakow in Poland. It's like a museum now, but they used to have people painting the houses in the village. Uh, yeah. Come on. So I have to be here. I work as data uh, platform architect for data masterminds. And uh, I started just before previous SQL bits. And I live in Southampton, UK, where uh, I organize the user group, sotondatacloud.org. It redirects to Meetup, and there, there are some details if you want to give a talk at our local user group, either virtually or in person, so feel free. Or you can just contact me on the social media, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, or Gmail. I'm not cool enough to have Mastodon like everyone else, so Twitter, feel free. So today, automated lab. What's, what's that? So we can see that's their fancy logo. Uh, it's a lab uh, glass, don't know the name, the gear automated, and the PowerShell symbol, because it's PowerShell module to automate your lab environment. And come on, that, was, that module was created by these two gentlemen, uh, Raymond and Jan Hendrik, uh, are, I think they are German, and they are working for Microsoft, but the product is open source free. I don't think it's uh, under the Microsoft agenda. It's just like, like an a open source pro uh, tool uh, you can use, everyone can use. And what exactly the, the automated lab is. So it's PowerShell uh, module. Um, I think you should see the, nope. There is a background of the PowerShell symbol. Um, to manage the, to create the VMs um, in Hyper-V. Like when you have Windows 11, you can spin up a Hyper-V VM, or you can do this in Azure as well. So two environments where you can spin up your lab testing environment. Maybe not for productions because, well, if you tweak that uh, a lot, you can use that maybe for production, but there are better tools for production. It's just for a, for yourself, just to create something uh, really quickly. So why, and why from me, I will show you the slides, uh, why from the creators. Uh, I used the, the lab, the automated lab for uh, my workshop when I was about to create multiple VMs and uh, I wanted to uh, repeat all my tasks on my demos and have the same environment each time. So it's not like I install something, then I forget about installing that, or fix something, or broke something, and then the whole VM doesn't work at the workshop because it's totally different. It's like a different machine. So I always wanted to have the same. And the biggest issue for me was the OS, creating the VM, because SQL Server, I can install SQL Server uh, with Docker, with Chocolatey, uh, other tools, uh, DSC, and I end up with multiple instances on my laptop. 
which is not ideal because then I have old versions of SQL Server like 2017, 2019, 2022 on the same laptop and I never know like which one is which. So the VMs were the, the answer to my, to my need. Um, I also used that at work when, uh, when I was uh, helping to, to create some commands for DBA tools. I, uh, I had the VM and just play with the VM, add some tools. After we finish that part, I could just delete that and forget about the, the whole thing. But it's also in a script. If I have a script, I can go back or share that with my colleagues who are sitting in this first, front, first row here, and they can do their stuff as well. Now the why from the creators. Um, they claim, and it's true, you can spin up the VM uh, using just three lines of code. Uh, sometimes it's funny, I, I've, uh, I saw someone posting on the internet, they built a uh, very advanced solution in Python in three lines, code, three lines of code, and someone commented like, yes, but in the first line you imported all the libraries, in the second line you just executed all the external scripts, so the third line was just like return something. So it's not really three lines because you added all the extra stuff. But with the automated lab, uh, you will see later, you have three commands that basically help you to uh, create the VM from scratch, and it's working. If you want something more advanced, uh, you will be able to do this uh, within 100 lines, and it will be really complex. You can create multiple VMs, domain controllers, SQL servers, etc., etc. And the, the other feature is that you can run the scripts on the VMs from your host. So when you finish the configuration, the initial configuration, you can always customize that. Run the scripts, install extra software. Uh, it's not like it's uh, deployed and just don't touch it. It's like a black box. No, you can always customize that with the scripts, either to execute them from your laptop or from the VM itself. And the third why, which is mentioned on the website, that it's easily connected to, to the internet. So whenever you create the VM in Azure or VMware, you can just get to the, uh, to the internet. So when I was doing this manually, you had to tweak all these different, different things, set up the network and stuff like that. But this is like very simple. Spin up the VM and use the... Um, the options from the internet. So one scenario was uh, spin up the VM and install all the PowerShell modules to the VM, but from the internet, from the VM. So I didn't have to uh, uh, install them from my laptop, just from inside. Uh, speaking of installing things, it's, it's a PowerShell module. So you have two options, like two basic options. One would be just go to GitHub project, uh, github.com, automated lab, automated lab, well, slashes in between, and uh, to go to tab releases, and there will be MSI installer, or just go to PowerShell gallery and install it like, well, you don't have to go to PowerShell gallery, just install dash module name automated lab, and install the, the, re the release one, or pre-release, uh, I found that uh, useful when I had an issue with the module that was fixed in the preview, and I could just use the pre-release. Yeah, that was really useful. Um, after you install the, the module, you get a structure like that on your selected drive. Uh, so here we can see, <coughs> excuse me, the lab sources is the main root folder for the automated lab solution. And then we have uh, extra folders. So one ISOs is the, the, the place where you put your images, like Windows um, Server, SQL Server, because they don't ship the, uh, is it ship, right? Ship, ship, no, okay, P. Uh, so <laughs> Windows Server and uh, the, the, the images you download yourself, whatever you want to install on your VMs. Uh, in Azure, you don't have to do this. It will just get them from their resources. Um, and in Azure, it will also create the storage account. 
and you can either copy your things to the Azure account or just use whatever they have. And uh, the tools folder uh, would be the one that you might copy from your laptop to the VM. So imagine, of, in my case, I had Management Studio. I had, uh, well, that's not a lot. Uh, I had VS Code uh, and some other extensions. It was all in the folder to called Tools. And when the machine was created, it was copied to locally to that machine. Also the scripts, anything you just put there, it will be just copied to the machine. And then you can use it from within the, the environment, not from your laptop, just forget about the, the host. Host is not important anymore. And uh, now I will present you a few scenarios. No demo here uh, today, sorry. Uh, but just uh, a short overview how to, uh, how to use them. So first one will be a simple, uh, sim simple scenario. Then we'll go to complex scenario. Yeah, that's slides, no demos. Then we'll be advanced and something more. So one thing I want you to take from the session is that whatever I take, tell. No, it's not. Well, you will see. So the simple one. We, can, uh, we have a, a cookie person, I think. It's very simple. It has some, something here, something here, and one thing here. It looks like person, but it's very simple. And you can do the same with the VMs. The, thir the three basic commands in the module are new lab definition, where you define, the, let's say, the project for the, the whole lab, and it will be a, like a container definition of everything else. Then for every, well, in simple scenario, it will be just one VM. So you define one VM with the add lab machine, machine definition. So it's like lab definition and lab machine definition. If you are using Azure, uh, you want to add the uh, subscription and the location, the region. And when you are using Azure, you will be prompted to log into your uh, Azure account. And you don't have to go to the portal to use the, the tool. Uh, you can do all, everything with, within the uh, PowerShell. And the last bit, the most important, is to execute the definition. So you can see three, four lines, four if you want to do this in Azure, three locally on your machine. And that's, that's it for the simple scenario. And when you, when you start installing that, you will see that that's a, just a screenshot of the uh, VS Code. You have all the details, like what is happening. You can either ignore that or read through and see the images, whatever is happening there. So that's uh, for the Hyper-V. And for the Azure, we can see here, I highlighted, well, I missed the, the other thing, but that's the uh, resource group automated lab res uh, sources could not be found, so it will create that in your Azure subscription. And also there is the, the second line at the bottom that the location will be UK South because you, I said I want this to be created in, the, like in my home region, like second home region, which is closer to Southampton, so UK South. And uh, yeah, the lab sources, that's the storage account that will be created in, uh, in your subscription. It will be empty, but you can use different functions to synchronize or during the configuration you can, well, that will be more advanced, but you can tell, synchronize all the stuff I have on my laptop with the Azure account and so on. So now a bit more complex uh, human cookie, person cookie, cookie person, with some bits that look like teeth and eyes and hearts. And you can also always add something to your lab. So you can change the default credentials, because by default it's uh, either um, administrator or install, the login name, and the password, I think it's some same pass, some pass one, something like that. It's in the documentation. But you can change that. And uh, you can also add the network de definitions to play with the networks. 
And the machine role definition is nice because they, are, they have predefined roles like SQL Server or uh, Domain Controller or uh, I think SharePoint fish something. So you can also define your roles, pre-create them and use them for more complex solutions. Uh, the more advanced uh, cookie person, it has some decorations and stuff. I see you might like them or not. But this is what I mentioned before, installing the software or running the scripts. And in my demo the, for the longer session, I show four ways how to install the software on the VM. So you can install that from the host using the software packet, uh, inst install software packet command. So the, the sources are on your laptop and go to the VM. Or you copy that from laptop via the tools folder to VM and install from there, or run the command. So in my demo that I showed, I uh, run the command to install uh, Chocolaty on the VM. Chocolaty is software package management. Uh, and from VM, I run the script in Chocolaty to install the software. So there is a flexibility in this tool. You don't have, you are not limited just to one way. It's, it's very, uh, very nice because some tools might not be working well with just copying them over from the host. And the last one, the more advanced, or most advanced, like very fancy cookie person, very posh. So definitely not from Southampton. And you can use all the rest of the commands. I just uh, listed a few of them, because if you see all the commands, that's, well, that's not really nice to see and read. But you can do the checkpoints, you can uh, restart or start and stop the, the VMs from within the commands of the, of the automated lab. The uh, configuration item, that's based on PS framework. So whatever config, like where are your sources, default settings for different things, because our automated lab comes with some defaults. You can change with this command and then uh, use get to uh, read the, the values. And finally, the snippets, um, where you can prepare the whole scenario. And they have uh, some examples on the website where you can just use the snippet, and it will work. It won't, but because some, some of them are, uh, are outdated. But if you do it for yourself, it will work. So these are the four. Uh, stages of the cookie person, I'm sorry, VM creation, our lab creation, and you can choose whatever you want. Uh, the first one for me was very frequently used just to create something quickly and see how it behaves. The, the one with the software installation was for the workshops to get all the tools like Management Studio, VS Code, and so on. And uh, yeah, fourth, if I have more time, I could just play with that like every day because I like this tool very much to, to give me the, uh, the help I needed. I forgot to mention that uh, we have no time for questions because that's very short. But if you have any questions, please let me know at uh, the social media. And here's the QR code. I think that's the correct one. Uh, it's probably not a scam or anything. Just scan random QR codes. Never. Uh, but that's, uh, I think that's the SQL Bits one uh, for the feedback. Uh, just please let me know if you like the session. That, that's great. If you didn't like the session, tell me why. Uh, is it just me? Or is it just you that you don't like? Yeah, just let me know so I can fix uh, the things and work uh, on the future better sessions. Thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the last day of the SQL Biz. Thank you.